Good morning, good morning to you on this Friday morning, this Fitness Friday. I am happy that it's Friday. It's been a bit of a week, um, but I'm, I'm glad to be with you on this morning for our Fitness Friday. We're a little bit early. I think I jumped the gun a little bit, but we're going to give you guys a few moments to get in and get settled um, for our devotional supplement this morning. Um, let me know how you guys are doing this week. How was your week? Um, as you're coming in, say good morning to your fellow virtual church members. We'll say it that way. Um, glad to have you again. If there is anyone in need of prayer, you could put that request in the chat. Also, you can message us um, for those prayer requests. Um, if you or someone else is in need of Bible studies or wants to know more information about this God that we serve, um, let us know in our Facebook Messenger app. We will be in contact with you as soon as we can. Um, but we definitely want to open up those doors for you to reach out to us for more information if that is your need. Again, we thank you for joining us on this Fitness Friday. I'm going to bring in our pastor in right now for our roll call. Pastor Goodlow, how are you, sir? Hey, I'm doing great on this Fitness Friday. Amen. I'm excited Amen. about what God's going to share with us this morning in our devotion uh, supplement from uh, Elder Rico Hill. Mm -hmm. I want to welcome everyone. I see they're coming in this morning. I see my brother-in-law, Al Selders, was oh, first man. online this morning, uh, followed close behind by Sister Deborah Cato mm -hmm. and my sister Liz out in Oklahoma. All right, Sister Yvonne Custard, Brother Herman Custard, my cousin Kay Davis, Huntsville, Alabama, mm -hmm. Brother Frederick McLean, Durham, North Carolina, Sister Cynthia Lee Young, and Veronica Dixon, both from Mobile, Alabama, Sister Mary Charles. Mm -hmm. All right, Sister Stephanie Francois, Sister Renee Dabney, Las Vegas, Sister Leola Cheney, Brian T. Booker. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Got a birthday. Uh, got a birthday. All, All right. right. Made the big six zero. <laughs> uh, what's that? Uh, three score. That's three score. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Sixty years young today. All right. Three score. All right. Praise God. All right. All right. Uh, Sister Cato, I think they're traveling this weekend, asking for mm -hmm. prayer. Sister Esther Holmes. Good All morning, right. My cousin Betty Davis, Harris, Huntsville, Mary Haley, Pastor Benjamin Francois, Bridget Washington Patman. Amen. All right. Sister Myrtle Wimper. All right. Tony Thomas Peterson. All right. Amen. Sister Marilyn Harrell, Chicago. Tony Peterson from Las Vegas. Sister Elaine Davis. Uh, my sister Stella Walker, Huntsville, Alabama. Amen. Elder and Sister John. All right. All right. Back in St. Lucia. Man, yeah. you guys go <laughs> quite often. I need to pack a bag and, and tr go along with you one day. All mm -hmm. right. St. Lucia. I never got a chance to visit St. Lucia. Mm -hmm. All right. Latrice Michaela. We got Faith for Duh. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Sister Mary Wells. Las Vegas. All right. Good to see everybody this morning. All right. Uh, Phil West. Los Angeles. Amen. Rundle John. Is that Elder John? Okay. Gail Grant, Sister Grant. All right. We want to invite you. Uh, we have quite a few join us this thus far this morning and invite someone, uh, share this with someone that you know mm -hmm. might uh, need to hear a word about our fitness and our health. All right, Sister Louise Franklin Jacob. 
All right, Lisa Crockett, Huntsville, Alabama. Osceola Howard, Apopka, Florida. All right, again, we want you to push your share button, your invite button, and invite someone to join you. All right, Sister Ezron Bernard, the daughter of past, uh, past <laughs> Elder Roger Bernard Sr. All right, Nisa Kimberlin Powell. Amen. All right, Sister Grant is asking for a prayer for her granddaughter who's traveling to California. All right. Brenda Clark, Sister Clark, Trevor Small. All right, Sister Virginia Hodges. All right, it's good to see everyone. And uh, we hope to see those who uh, will be joining us for our worship experience tomorrow on the Sabbath. Uh, our worship will be at, uh, our Bible study starts at 10. Uh, our worship uh, experience will start at 11 o'clock for our divine worship. Please join us either live and in person or join us through our Facebook, uh, uh, YouTube uh, site. Amen. All right. Well, as soon as we get the um, prayer line family in, we'll get ready to get started. Is uh, Elder Rico here with us yet? He is here. I'll bring him on quickly just to say a, a quick good morning. Good morning, Elder. How are you? Right. Good small. morning. Good morning, Fitness Friday folks all around. I was just listening all around the world. This has become international. <laughs> Praise the yes. Lord. And I think half of them are family to Dr. Goodlow. Mm -hmm. Goodlow. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you know, my uh, unless you're talking about Christ, that's my extended family. Amen. Amen. Yes, okay. sir. Amen. All right. Good to see you. All right. We'll, all we'll right. introduce Good to have you with us, Dr. Right. Hill. Good to hear your voice. All right, my sister Patricia Conagay uh, in the Mar D.C., Maryland area, Dr. Hezekiah Brinson, Elder Aaron Keys, G.T., Glad Tidings. Amen. All right. All right. Um, uh, uh, if you could... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Give me a minute, I'll get the prayer line. Will do, will do. Good morning, good morning again, everyone. Um, again, I want to thank you for joining us um, through our devotional supplements um, that we've been doing since the pandemic. Um, Pastor Goodlow and Sister Goodlow have been leading out, and I've come on recently to you know help facilitate, and it's 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 exciting to see the familiar faces and names of individuals that are joining us each morning and we definitely want to pause and thank you for um committing to joining us over over the virtual space and we we know and we pray that god is blessing um through our devotional series so um again very quickly before we get back to our our um worship experience this morning. Take the messages that we've been hearing and sharing and apply them to your life. That's all that we're here to do as believers, as Christians. Take what we've heard, take what's been inspirational, take what's been encouraging and apply it to our lives so that we can be the men and women God wants us to be. And as we do that, we can pour that into others as well. So thank you again for joining us. And we pray again that you Take these nuggets from Monday through Friday and, and apply them to, to your daily life. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Good morning to those who are on the prayer line. Good to see you this morning. We hope all is well with you this morning. We're going to get ready to mute you uh, so the background noise will not uh, disturb the speaker. All right. We'll unmute you at the end if you have any questions. All participants are muted and they can unmute themselves. All right. We want to um, 
just share a couple of prayer requests that we'd like to for you to uh, keep in mind as you go throughout this day. Uh, we're asking for traveling mercies for all those who are traveling this weekend. Sister Sandra Smith's niece, um, in regards to kidney, uh, I think is a kidney transplant. Um, so keep uh, Sister Sandra Smith's niece in prayer. And also Sister Juliet Richardson, we want to keep her in prayer. We want to pray for Sister Gail Grant's granddaughter who's traveling to California. And we want you to remember our church, World Church, as they assemble in St. Louis this coming week, starting Sunday. Uh, we will start our general conference session. I have been uh, appointed as a delegate uh, for the session. So we'll be traveling coming Sunday, going to the GC session in St. Louis. But pray for our world leaders, as the leaders all over the world uh, from the Seventh-day Adventist Church come together to plan and make decisions about leadership, future leadership uh, plans, and talking about strategizing to help spread the gospel throughout the world. So let's pray that the Spirit of God will be in control of this session, not man not woman, but the spirit of almighty God will be in control and will take control and that we'll have a Pentecostal outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the place. And it won't be what man planned, but be what God planned for our church and for our people at this particular time. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Uh, Father and our God, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up on this Fitness Friday. We thank you for help. We thank you for strength. We thank you for a sound mind. And we thank you, Lord, for your love and your mercy and your grace. We thank you for the forgiveness of all sins. We pray that you would cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord, anything that might hinder us from hearing your word and keeping us from applying and making application of your word so that we can have a better quality of life, that abundant life that you desire for us. Remove those things from us, Lord, and give us willing spirits that we might be willing to follow as you lead and guide us. And Lord, we want to lift up Sister Sandra Smith's niece. We pray that you would bless her with the situation with her kidneys. We pray, oh Lord, that you would bring healing and that her body will uh, cooperate with the kidney uh, transplant, or, uh, what's taking place. And we just pray for uh, Sister Juliet Richardson. We pray that you would just bring healing to her. And Lord, we pray that you would bless Sister Gail Grant's granddaughter as she travels to California, give her safe travel, watch over and protect her, keep her safe. And then Lord, we wanna lift up our World Church, the general conference session that will be taking place next week, Sunday through Sabbath. We pray that you would bless the leaders of our church. And we pray, oh Lord, that we will have a Pentecostal uh, uh, experience there in St. Louis, Lord, that the Spirit of God would come in and just take control. And Lord, our agenda will be your agenda. What's your agenda? Your agenda will be our agenda, and we will be doing what's according to your will and your plans and your purpose. Now we ask that you bless our speaker for this morning. We thank you for the sacrifice, and we thank you for the commitment of Elder Rico here. We thank you, Lord, that he was willing to be with us over the past two years to uh, just minister to us on this Fitness Friday. And Lord, we thank you that many of us are living a better lifestyle as a result of this Fitness Friday, the first Fitness Friday. So blessed now as he present at this time, speak through him, use him as you have in times past. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Are we live? We're live. Good morning. Live in living color. Good morning, Pastor, again. Good morning, Elder. Uh, and good morning to you all, Fitness Friday fellow servants, favorites of the Most High God, fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, it is a beautiful day here in Maryland. So I bid you good morning and a sunshiny day to those on this preparation day as we prepare to go into sabbath those who are joining around the world as i heard the uh, the roll call 
So good morning in in uh, New Orleans, first and foremost, the base, the hub. Good morning to those in California and Las Vegas and in St. Lucia and uh, all the places right here in D.C. I heard someone is right here locally where I am. So you're enjoying enjoying this beautiful morning as well. So I am once again delighted to be with you. It's finally summertime. We went straight, almost feels like we went straight from winter to summer. I think we skipped fall as well um, in uh, the end of 2021 and went straight from summer to winter. So it seems like we don't have much of a spring or a fall anymore. It goes from being cold to being hot. I think it was just a month ago. I think I uh, turned on and put wood in my fireplace and it was the beginning of May. So things are definitely going on and time is wrapping up, but yet God has called his people to still be fit. Nonetheless, to be faithful in our lifestyle, to be faithful in the word of God. And this morning, we want to give you both. We want to give a word to you and we want to direct your path to the one that will bring you health and wholeness and happiness and joy everlasting. Let's have a brief word of prayer. Pastor has prayed and I appreciate the prayer, but I'm going to pray one more time as we begin this morning. Father in heaven, thank you for the dedication of Pastor Goodlow and, and um, all those who are involved in this these morning devotions and this Fitness Friday that I've been a part of. Bless us this morning. Give us thy Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, it's 2022, June 2022, just the beginning, just as we are, uh, are about to approach summer. And, um, you know, in this time in Earth's history, believe it or not, this will challenge the bounds of credulity that people are still asking those who subsist on a plant-based diet, they will ask the question, where do you get your protein? Where do you get your protein? Now, in this short morning devotion, I don't have time to break down um, all that could be broken down and shared in this, in this regard, but I'm just going to focus very briefly on some illustrations that might help us to understand and address this, this question for those of us who find ourselves often having to answer it. Those who are in the world, I was one time in a, a Trader Joe's and uh, I had all my items there. There was a lot of fruits and vegetables and things of that nature. And the woman looked at me, the cashier, and as she was ringing up my item, she said, um, are you a vegan? And she said it with a bit, you know, she was quite snarky. She says, are you a vegan? I said, yes, I am. She says, oh, well, I tried that before and it, it doesn't work. You need your, you need a, you need to get off of carbs. That's the thing. And she started to be, um, become this expert. Isn't it amazing that people who actually work in Trader Joe's and, and will actually check out your items or in different places, somehow they become nutrition experts right there on the spot and can tell you what you need to do. Now, I could have said lots of things to her because I've given many, many lectures, but I could tell this woman was already convicted in her own mind about what she believed. And she basically told me that I needed more protein. I needed more fat. She talked about the keto diet. She talked about the Atkins diet. She talked about all these things that have actually killed people in the past and will kill many more. But she spoke of them as if it was this new idea the paleo diet and all these things that keep coming up when really all we need is what God said that we needed back there in the garden in Genesis 1:29, Genesis 3:18. And it is a plant-based diet. Now that is not to discourage anyone who might be right now still partaking of a little fish, a little chicken, a little a few of some other things. This is a journey and we're on it together and we're learning together and it's been 2 years as the elder mentioned, two years, as the pastor mentioned, that we have been sharing from month to month 
And I know and I praise God that he is blessing your life. He is making you healthier and making you fit. So, yeah, so this idea that somehow people think they know more about nutrition than God does. They know more about nutrition than the science does, than the research, than the Adventist health studies, and all these things that have been given to us and shared with us over the past few years. Let me ask you a question, fellow servants of the Most High God. Have you ever gone to visit someone in a, uh, a, a ward uh, of the hospital some wing of the hospital, some, uh, you know, intensive care unit of the hospital. Maybe even have you ever sat down next to someone who was in urgent care and they were there, they were laid up in the hospital or there because they were suffering from a lack of protein. Has it ever happened? Have you ever seen anybody who suffered from a lack of protein. It's amazing to me. I've never met or heard of or read about anyone who suffered from a lack of this thing called protein. Protein is basically the building block. The building blocks, amino acids are the building blocks. That's what gives us our protein, produces protein. There are essential amino acids and, uh, or there, there are amino acids that make up our protein. These are the building blocks for all tissue of all living things on earth. And, and yet somehow we think that we know more, listen, than God did when he actually came up with this chemical equation, this formula for all living things. And somehow we say, well, you need more of it. Well, let me just assure you, if God gave us a diet in Genesis 1.29, where he says, behold, I have given you, I have given you the herb yielding seed. I have given you the tree yielding fruit, yielding seed. This shall be meat for you. And then after sin, God brings in Genesis 3.18 because of a sinful, sinful condition and all of the disease and sickness that would come as a result. God then brings in, in Genesis 3.18, the herb of the field, because we understand now, and I've shared on at least a few occasions for Fitness Friday, that herbs truly are. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven and exercise Revelation 22, where the herbs are the healing of the nation. It was the healing of the nations from the moment that God gave it in Genesis chapter 3, 18. Those are your collard greens and your kale and your Swiss chard and your lettuce and your Brussels sprouts and your cabbage and your cauliflower. All these are the, 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 the vegetables that God brought in after sin, because now we see that these are the things that actually cure and fight cancer. These are your cancer-fighting vegetables. And the burden of disease study shows that if we just ate the recommended amount of fruits and vegetables that are given to us, hundreds of thousands of lives, in fact, they say 100,000 lives could be saved per year if we just followed that simple guideline. And do those things contain proteins? Absolutely, because God designated that they would have protein, but so much more. So much more is found in those things. Now, I want to just help us to understand something, that if God has given us a diet, and if we, let's just say that we're a house, right? Some big houses, small houses, tiny houses, all different types of size houses. But there's one thing that's needed for every house, regardless of its size. Every house needs building materials. We need, in fact, I'm just finishing up a construction project here, a little small home sanitarium out here in 
my little outpost farm. I've talked about it before. I'm almost at completion and giving praise and honor to God and can't wait to be sharing with people in small retreats, little small retreats as people come to restore their health and to relax and to learn about the goodness of God. But you need in any construction project, building up a house, you need material. You need two by fours. You need lumber. You need those things that build up the house that holds up the walls like your bones. So our bodies are like a house. We need building materials, right? And the Bible tells us in Psalm 127 and verse 1, Psalm 127 and verse 1, the Bible says, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. I like the fact that if you had any kind of questions or doubt what God is trying to say to us, verse 2 comes along and says, it is in vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sleep. So God is in control not only of building of the house, but he's also in control of how sweet our sleep will be. He gives everything. He is the builder. And when God gave a diet in Genesis 129 and 318, he was giving us the raw materials to build the house. Now, if you decide that you want to build a different way. The Bible says that you build in vain. Now, just to make sure that we're clear that we are that house, Paul comes along, ratifies this idea, adds to it, magnifies it even in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. He says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, now he's talking about this body, this body, this earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in heavens. So God is taking us from the one he built up in Genesis and lets us know that in the end of this all, when this, in, this mortal will put on immortality, when this corruption will put on in, incorruption, it will be one that God made because God, listen to me very carefully. Unless God builds your house, it's being built in vain. So God wants you to know, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. I built the house in the beginning. I built Adam. He made Adam fearfully and wonderfully. And when we change bodies, come on, y'all. We're going to change. It's going to be a whole new body. When God does that, when that happens, God's going to do that too. And he wants you to know that he's just that wise. He knows exactly what you need. So let's deal with this building of this body. Now, when you consider protein, now what people who do a lot of protein from a meat source, when they talk about you need more of it, they have bought into this idea that, and it was a line that was started about 80 years ago, as they started saying it was impossible to get all the protein, the essential amino acids, there are like eight of them that we have to get from a diet. Our body produces some, but we have to get these essential ones, these eight from other sources, namely food. And this idea, you cannot get a complete protein from anything other than from eating from animal products. It was a lie and they had they kept pushing the lie and pushing it and pushing it until they finally had to say, you know what, there's too much evidence. We've been proved wrong and they admitted it just a few years ago. But there was this idea that you had to get it from meat. But here's the science that God understood. And that is this, that the meat that people say that they must have, that Animal products, and again, I wanted you just came on. He said, Oh, he's actually eat meat. No, you missed it when I said 
We don't judge. We don't condemn you. If that's where you are in your journey on Fitness Friday, we're all on a journey and we just share information to super smart people, intelligent people who, when they hear something, they say, ah, that makes sense. And based on that, they begin to make decisions, good decisions, lifestyle decisions, as it is appropriate for them on their journey. Is that clear? Amen. Want to make sure that we understand that no one should feel condemned for anything that I'm saying. This is information both from the Bible and good science, and you can make application. And guess what? You will be much better off because of it. Because the science says, even for the women out there, it is a fact. Research shows that women both pre-menopausal and post, have denser mineral bone density. They have, they have more mineral bone density than anyone else when they are on a plant-based diet. Plant-based women, women who have a plant-based diet, let me say it that way, have more mineral bone density than those who actually take meat. So that's why you'll find that what a lot of women suffer from issues like osteoporosis and things like that. It actually leaches the calcium, the, this, um, the phosphorus from the bones, and you end up with lots of issues. Just wanted to make that point so that those who are listening, um, especially for those who like are uh, saying, well, where's the research, brother? <laughs> Where's the research? want to let you know that we're giving Bible and good research that you can use to make application and help you to make those kind of decisions, but no condemnation for where you might be at this time. But we're using the text that God wants to build you up. And that's what he did from the very beginning, because we find that this line that was that was perpetrated for years and years and years actually was re, um it was debunked, this, this research, and, and we began to see that, you know what? All you need in terms of protein is found in the plants, just like God said in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 29 and Genesis 3, 18. You know, plants are the alchemists. They're like chemists all on their own. They have no brains. They walk, don't walk around. They have no laboratories. Yet, they take from thin air. They take from nothing, and they produce everything. Did you hear what I just said? Let me break it down a little further. Plants, the ones that you see in that grocery aisle, the ones that you see that are still alive as they are cooled there in the different refrigeration units and you pick them and take them home and put them in your refrigerator and, and choose at your discretion when to eat them, they still contain living enzymes. They still contain, yes, even protein in those fruits and vegetables. Here's how, here's how it happens. They take from the, from the, Water, use the use of sunshine, water, and carbon dioxide. And then they basically create the structure, the shape, and the energy for everything on this planet. Did you hear what I just said? Plants. Yes, I've got a little small orchard here, and I got still got to get a few things in the ground, my tomatoes and things like that. But those little plants, those little seedlings right now that are not as big as my hand are going to take from the sunshine, from the water that it receives, and from the carbon dioxide, and they're going to produce glucose, sugar. Just let your mind just feast on that for just a moment. That there wasn't anything in the air. Go out in the air, taking a deep breath. Just see if you can taste it. Do you taste sugar? Is it sweet? Is it salty? Does it have flavor? There's mostly pollution in the air. But somehow that plant takes that carbon dioxide, takes that sunshine and water, and then it converts it to something that will be tasty in your mouth something that will be full of minerals and vitamins and nutrients that will sustain your life and will build your house. 
In fact, take it a step further. Those of you who plant, you know what I'm talking about. That when you can plant, you can spray your garden, you can water it, water it, water it all day long if you want. But until that rain comes, that little cucumber was just the size of your pinky. You can come back after that rainstorm and that thing has looked like it's full grown. What happened? How did that happen? You were spraying it all along. You were watering it all along. But then once you actually, I mean, once God sent down the rain and that rain brought down the nitrogen, you know, the atmosphere is like 70 some percent nitrogen and a smaller percentage of oxygen. It's mostly nitrogen. And that nitrogen comes down and then that for the root system, that plant absorbs that nitrogen and it then produces amino acids from which we get protein. And that is the building block of every tissue of every creature and everything on this planet. And so guess what? Those cows, those chickens, whatever it is, let's just deal with the cows. They go and they take a big old bite of that stuff and then they receive protein from the same source that you can get it. What we like to do is we like to get it secondarily. We want to get it as a byproduct. But why not go directly to the source? Cut out the middle cow, if you understand what I'm saying. Cut out the middle man, the middle cow, and get it yourself. And did you know that you can get more protein from spinach than you can from a six-ounce steak? Did you know that the, the best protein, the most intense amount of protein that you can get is from pumpkin seeds? It's amazing what God has provided and is right there. So the question never needs to be. It never needs to be, how do you get your protein? One final thing I'll say as we bring this to a close. You must understand. I'm going to use the analogy of that house again. Your body does not store protein. It doesn't store protein. Everybody should just let that just ride over your mind. Say it with me. Your body does not store protein. It doesn't do it. In fact, you only need about um, a half to 0.8 grams per kilogram of protein per day. Most people get one and a half to two times the amount of protein that they actually need. And oh, don't get me started on protein shakes. Protein shakes. People say, well, oh, I'm trying to build up muscle. I'm working out. Protein shakes are a waste of time and they are actually very detrimental. Most of them are dairy based and, and you end up with just expensive urine and expensive you know what I'm saying. And you don't need it. And if you're going to do it, you should do pea protein or a soy based one. But it's a waste of time because you don't need it. Let me tell you why with my illustration. Now, in this whole thing, building up a house, this idea, when you start to build a house and you know you've calculated lumber is very expensive right now. Trust me on this one. Uh, in my construction project, it's been super expensive just to buy two by fours gone up like 40%. So imagine that with this expenses, expensive lumber, I'm building a house, you're building a house. And once that semi truck brings all the lumber, the lumber for you to build your house and you get the, you know, you get that foundation down and you get the walls up and you get the roof on and all this stuff and the walls are up. Do you still need the next day or the month after for them to bring you another semi truck load of lumber? Do you need it? No. Once the house is built, all you need is maintenance. All you need is maintaining the house that you've started to build or built. So once it's finished, let's say the house is completely finished. Do you still need them to keep bringing you a semi truck load of lumber and raw materials? No, it ends up being just stuff left out on your front yard or in the backyard because you can't use it. You can't store it up. You're just needing maintenance now. The roof starts to leak. What do you do? 
You get some shingles and you fix the roof, right? You get some drywall. Maybe you puncture the hole moving in your furniture. Well, guess what? You got to get a little piece of drywall to fix that. But you don't need a whole truckload of drywall or shingles because now you're just maintaining. That's what we're doing when we're eating protein. We're just maintaining. God has already built up the house. He has a certain limitation to how much protein you're going to need. When you're growing, you need more to build up that house. But then guess what? After it's built, you just need to maintain it. If you do more than that, guess what you end up with? Like I said, stacks, pals, or inside the human body, tumors, cysts, fibroids. You end up with those things. Sometimes they're benign, but sometimes they're really irregular, and that's cancer. And it's all because you kept building on something that no longer needed to be built on. You just needed to maintain the house. Unless the Lord builds the house according to his plan, according to his way, the laborer builds in vain that builds it. God, the Bible tells us, God, know you not, Psalm 100 verse 3, that he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. So God wants you to know, I know how to build you. I built you from the beginning, and here are the raw materials that I gave you to build up your house. Anything else other than that is going to be an aberration, is going to be something that might be detrimental or injurious to your health. This is the message today. Let the Lord continue to build your house, to maintain your house, to repair your house, to restore your house. And the way that you do it is according to his plan, his method, and his, his way. May God bless you. May you have a blessed Sabbath when it comes. Amen, amen. Thank you, Elder Rico, for those inspiring and encouraging words about allowing God to build a house. And we thank God for you. We thank God for your ministry. And we pray that God will bless you. And again, we want to thank everyone who joined us this morning on our Fitness Friday, our first Fitness Friday of the month. As we have begun the month of June, we pray that we will continue to trust God and continue to allow him to do what he needs to do in our lives. So what I want to do is just take a couple of minutes. We're not going to take long. But if there are any questions, uh, we want those who are on Facebook Live uh, to put it in the chat box. If you have a question, put it in the chat box. We will uh, 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 ask uh, Elder Hill to respond to your question. So if you have a question, just put it in the chat box right quick. I'm going to unmute those who are on the prayer line. And if you have a question, you can share that with us at this time. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. All participants are unmuted. All right, all right. All right, to those on the prayer line, any questions? Just going to take a couple of minutes. Any questions? All right. Yes. Thought I heard someone respond. Okay. We have one on Facebook, Pastor. Okay. It said, why is protein not stored long enough, long in the body? Question is, why is protein not stored long in the body? Well, it's very simple. As I mentioned, it's not stored because it's not needed. Your body is constantly recycling and reusing and looking for what is new each day. The Bible tells us that God is a provider. He will give us our daily bread. And so the body functions almost in the same spiritual way that we look 
not for, say, for example, remember God poured down manna from heaven and he gave it how often? Every, every day. day. He gave it every day. And if they tried to store it, what happened? It, uh... it would become worms. It became something that was bad, something that was putrid. Well, guess what? The body's the same way in the way that God designed us. He wants to us to come to him daily. He wants us to receive those things daily in your food, not to store it up, not to try to hold on or hoard it. So the body doesn't hoard in the same way that we weren't supposed to hoard manna. God will give it to you daily. And that's how the body's designed. Try to store it up. See, it, it uses it. It takes it, it uses it, and doesn't need to store it. You need to give it more the next day. Get too much of it, you've stored it, and now the body doesn't know what to do with it, so it becomes something else, and that's when it becomes harmful. So I hope that illustration makes sense to you, but I think the manna is the perfect uh, way to look at it. God is a daily provider. We, we pray to God Give us our daily bread. And that's what God wants to do, even with protein. All right. Thank you. Another question. Can we have too much protein in our system? That's, that's the answer I'm giving you. When you have too much, your body doesn't know what to do with it because it wants to use it as fuel. It wants to burn it and then be done with it. But when it cannot, it has to store it or attempt to store it, but it doesn't store it, store it in a way that's useful to you. It stores it in a way that's harmful or can become harmful and becomes something like a tumor. That's the danger of attempting to have too much or when you have too much, it's going to become something uh, that is an abnormality something that's not normal, tumors, fibroids, cysts. Amen, amen. Okay, another question. How do we know how much, I'm assuming, protein we need? Well, from a meat source, it's the wrong kind of protein. Remember, the cow, the... Uh, the what whatever type of meat source you're getting it from they're they're getting it in the same way that you would get it in the same way that god provides it you know you'd be surprised chickens don't just peck and eat um you know uh grain that's in those factory farms when you have free-ranging chicken they're out there eating bugs and they even i was a uh, shocked pastor i was in uh, boulder colorado and we went to a little uh a little farm we we're shooting a documentary, and it was amazing uh, that the, uh, the the farmer grabbed this this bushel of greens that he was growing, and the chickens went wild for it. I couldn't I'd never mm. seen chickens eat plants, and mm. they went wild for it. Um, but they were they receiving their protein in the exact same way. So we need to keep in mind that it's not so much an issue or should you should be like, well, how much, how much protein should I eat? The entire world, including and especially the United States of America, people get too much protein. That's why we have so much sickness. So if you have um, a diet that has lots of colorful greens, I mean, colorful vegetables, your greens, your reds, your yellows, you know, your all the, the colors of the rainbow in a bowl of living food. And then you have some um, some sort of a grain, brown rice, and you have your legumes um, right there. You have exactly what you need. Um, and you can't really OD on plant protein mm. where people are ODing or overdosing is on protein from the wrong source. So guess what? We go right back to that garden, Genesis 129, Genesis 1, uh, 128. That's when he gave the green grass and the herbs to the animals. And then he gave it to us in Genesis 3, 18 because of sickness and sin. 
we go back to that and we see that God was right. When you eat a plant-based diet, you never have to count calories when you do it, when you're doing it right, because you can do plant-based wrong too. Oreos are vegan, I hear. Um, and you can do a lot of these things that they're coming out with, and you can overdo some of these, you know, some of these uh, fake meat products. But when you're doing stuff that's like right from the hand of God, the grains, the, you know, the vegetables and fruit and, you know, the seeds and the nuts and things like that, you are always going to be in the right place and you don't have to really count it. Now, let me give this one caveat, Pastor. You do have to be careful with nuts. Nuts are a good source of protein. However, they are also a fat. It's a good fat, but you can eat too much or too much of a good thing. So you have to be temperate there. Only a, a handful or a quarter cup of nuts per day, even less if it's Brazil nuts. And even less, even less, less if it's macadamia nuts and pecans. They are high in fat. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, Elder Rico Hill. We uh, are very appreciative of your presentation this morning and uh, it's been very informative and uh, engaging. And we just pray that those who have been listening in will just do a little bit more research, you know, do some study on your own. Search, uh, you know, they got all kind of articles, they got all kind of books. You know, you can Google different things and just do your own research and to uh, supplement uh, what uh, Elder Hill is gives us each Fitness Friday on the first Fitness Friday and the other health presenters so we can know for ourselves what uh, what's good for us and what's not good for us. So thank you again for the presentation. And we just thank God for everyone who joined us. All right, uh, Elder Woods, if you could close us out, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we pause again to say thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you for the encouraging message uh, regarding the house that you've built. God, we're, I'm inspired just by the, the framing and the language of, of the examples that uh, Elder Hill gave. And again, we pray that we take this information, um, not only as good information, but we find a way to apply it to our lives. Um, beginning with small steps, may we make the necessary changes that we need to make so that our bodies can rightly represent what you teach through your word. So again, we thank you for the encouraging message. We ask that you um, continue to pour out your spirit on Dr. Hill and his family. Continue to bless him and enlarge their ter his territory and his family's territory. Do the same for Pastor and Sister Goodlow and us as well. May we become the men and women you would have us to be. We thank you now for the gift of salvation. And we pray that we see you in peace when you come. In your son's strong name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. And again, thank everyone that joined us. We pray that you will have a sanctified Sabbath, a soul for Sunday, and we'll see you back on our magnificent Monday. God Amen. bless you. All right.